okay, so that's kind of where I'm living. And uh, if we do a satellite view, and we kind of zoom in, you'll see that I am in a narrow, small space where I am. There's not much room for me to put up an antenna. The house is here. Uh, that's an old photograph with, I guess, the old owner's car there in the driveway. So what I decided to do here to put an antenna up is that I was going to run a long wire around the perimeter of the house. And I didn't have time to do that right out of warm weather to, to do that. And uh, plus, Kevin had to warn me about safety. You know, I don't want to fry my kid. <laughs> so anyway, so what I decided to do was to run the uh, long wire. I've got a long wire tuner and I've got pictures. I'll show you all this stuff. I just want to kind of show you the layout uh, so you can uh, kind of understand how the antenna runs. So it's a long wire antenna and it runs along the side of the house here, along this fence, along this fence here. And uh, there's a fence here, goes right along the fence, comes back along the fence. And right about here, it comes back across. And right in here, there's a trellis. It goes uh, midway along the trellis. This fence is about, you know, five to six feet. This part of the fence, it's five feet. This part of the fence over here, it's about six feet. And so the, um, as a test, I decided to put the antenna up and just see how well it uh, performs. And right over here is I put a ground plane in and I took some chicken wire, approximately about 100 square feet of uh, chicken wire, and I've got it that on the ground. And I got stones and dirt and stuff on it. And that becomes kind of my ground plane instead of running radials, because normally you'd want to run radials with this with this antenna because it needs to have a good um, a ground plane uh, to act uh, uh, upon right so any questions so far pretty straightforward so uh if we start uh um, let me start going through so basically what i have is i have an icom age four remote antenna tuner and that tunes from uh, anywhere from 80 meters right up to uh, 30 meter, um, 10 meters, uh, 30 megahertz. Um, it does. It says it cannot tune 160 meters, and uh, I have in fact confirmed that you get a fairly high SWR. I chose 200 feet, uh, 203 feet of wire because with a long wire antenna, you want to choose a length that's non-resident on any band you're gonna be operating it on. And uh, so at 203 feet, that allows me to be resonant, to be not resonant, but to be able to use the 80 meter band right up to the 10 meter band. And the antenna is about six feet off the ground, as I said, for testing. I've got about hundred square feet of chicken wire as my ground, um, ground plane. And I also have a four foot ground spike in the ground that's more for static. And I've got two eight foot radials. It's just wire I had on hand. So I just ran two eight foot radials off of the ground spike uh, parallel to the uh, chicken wire. I just, I just had some wire, some copper wire, and I just threw it in the ground. I thought, let me try and get as much wire on the ground as I could for my uh, ground plane. So here's where the antenna um, comes out of the house. Uh, the antenna, and the, I've got twisted pair here. You can see the beige twisted pair. That's what's actually tuning, uh, controlling the antenna tuner. So my wire comes out, goes into a remote antenna switch. Later on, I'm gonna add another antenna, probably my vertical. So right now it's only switched to one of the ports. I've got, it's a four port switch that I can tune remotely. And so that runs along behind the air, air conditioner here, along here and goes to the tuner. Here's the tuner here. There's the uh, 
a twisted pair wire. It's outdoor grade twisted pair wire that uh, runs to the tuner and that's what uh, actually um, uh, gets the tuner to, uh, to kick in and start tuning. You can actually see the wire, the antenna wire there. You, I don't know if you could see that clearly, the gray wire. Uh, you could see the ground spike there. There's my ground spike. And you could see the two copper radials. They're, they're approximately five or six feet in length. And here you could see the attachment where I've got it attached to the chicken wire mesh. And I've also got a copper wire run along the entire distance of the mesh and I've got it soldered to various places just to make sure I it's it's completely um, connected together because it's I think it's about three pieces, three sections of mesh, and uh, where the mesh ov overlap eventually in time, you know that's going to corrode. So I decided to solder uh, these uh, this ground uh, this copper wire to it, and then the black things are coax seal. I put so that the solder joint doesn't corrode. Uh, Dave, question? Yep. What are the copper radials for? It just, you, you need a counterpoise for, for this antenna. I just put it down because I wanted, I wasn't sure whether the 100 square feet of mesh would would be good enough as a, as a, cop, as a ground plane. So I just threw that down just because I had the wire. There was no reason to go, specific reason to go and put it down. But here you could see a closer look at uh, the copper wire where it's soldered to the mesh and uh, the um, coaxial. I've got that uh, down. And so now you could see the wire running along the house here through this window. Uh, uh, past this window, then it goes up to this point here. It's kind of arcing up to, to, to this point. It runs along the fence there, then it runs along this fence here. And here you can see the wire running along the fence to the other side of the fence and along the fence uh, there. And then the, the ground plane is here. The canoe sitting on top of the ground plane there. So again, this is a test. This is not a permanent antenna. I just want to test the uh, tuner to make sure it's working and just to see, you know, whether this antenna, this low to the ground, whether it would actually work. And also too, I wanted to check the fields coming off of uh, the antenna. And I've been doing that and I'll do a subsequent presentation on the fields coming off of this antenna. So here you can see the wire coming across uh, from the fence to the um, trellis here. And you know, you could basically walk up and touch this wire. And so my motto is safety, we don't need no stinking safety. You so you know, lightning grounds, do you? Yeah, so I you know, I again it's a test setup. So the way I tested the the antenna, um, was I ran a CW message using Digital Master 780. I don't know CW if it comes up and bites me. I have no idea. So all I do, I programmed, I set up Digital Master 780 to send out CW test DEV 30IK. And I did that at 20 words per minute. And I ran that, I did, I think I did about 10 messages of that uh, and the reason I did that is because Reverse Beacon will pick up this message. You could also do a CW, but the problem is if I call CW, someone might answer it. So I decided to just do a test a message. And uh, the reason I did this is that the Reverse Beacon will pick this up. And there are beacons, you know, uh, there's spotters all over uh, Canada and the US. and uh, you know, across in uh, in Europe, that could pick up my signal and tell me what uh, how strong the signal is. I also tried running Whisper as well from WSJT software, 
And uh, you know what? I got extremely favorable results. I just, I couldn't believe how well this antenna works. And on the weekend, I was able to make two contacts, three contacts. On the weekend, Saturday, uh, Peter and I were playing around and I was able to make uh, a few contacts. And uh, no animals were, were fried uh, during this test. So here's the results from, and I've got this in a spreadsheet that I could pull up. Um, you could get more detail because what I did, I got the the um, uh, azimuth where um, the angle of which this is to me, so I could understand distance and as well as uh, directionality of the antenna. So I've got that in a spreadsheet. But these are the stations I got on. Uh, 2.49, what's, is that 180 meters? What's 2.49? Oh no, that's 21, sorry. That's 21 megahertz and that's 24 megahertz. Yeah, 24 megahertz yeah. Sorry, sorry, I thought it was 2.4 megahertz. I was going, what the, what the hell was I doing? So that's a 24 megahertz. So I, one, one station picked me up, 6 dB over the noise floor, which is pretty darn good. You know, here on 21 megahertz, uh, 14. Uh, v6, that's a, um, where's F8? Is that a, is that a US? No, F8's uh, France. France, okay. So France picked me up there. Uh, V6, that's Calgary, right? Or Alberta, it could be Edmonton too. Yeah, oh, well, Alberta, sorry, Alberta. Yes, Alberta. Yeah, it's Alberta. Yeah, so here's on um, on 80 meters. Again, pretty good signal to noise ratio here. So it looks as if the antenna, you know, transmits fairly well. Here it is on 40 meters. And uh, uh, Peter, one of the interesting things on 40 meters, you'll see in my spreadsheet, is some of these stations were at 90 degrees to me, which you're about 90 degrees to me. We had trouble with 40. But it just this day, maybe 40 was open, right, for these stations. And for you, maybe 40 was closed or just the noise floor was yeah. too high. Because I think, did you not hear me on 40? I can't remember if I barely heard you on 40 or 80, one of the two. Uh, you know what? It was probably 40 that I barely heard you on because the noise floor was really high on 80. Yeah, yeah. And so here's on 10, OL7, where is that? That's um, Iceland. That's Iceland. Here's another French station. So you can see I'm getting pretty good uh, DX. No, TF is Iceland. I, I, yeah, there's T. Yeah, Iceland. OL, I think, might, is that Belgium, maybe? I don't know. I've got it listed where it is um, on my spreadsheet, but I was able to get across to Iceland, 8 dB above the noise floor, which, you know, I think that's pretty damn good. Right? And uh, for contacts, these are contacts I made. So on... Uh, 80, uh, sorry, 40 meters, I made two contacts, two US contacts. Here's the azimuth. So Peter, you're at 67 degrees to me. You're about 327 kilometers away. So, and there's a signal to noise ratio. This is the SNR that got reported back to me. Peter, you reported you were hearing me at, at plus four. I just know I was just, and I said plus four, but it was, it was remarkable the difference between uh, what we heard you at 60 meters compared to 40 and 80. You know, like 80 was impossible, 40 was a struggle. Well, it was impossible really, but 60 was, well, we could have carried on a conversation. We should yeah. have had sideband, but oh well. Yeah, it was, you were just booming in. You were coming in really well. You know, and so this kind of concludes the slide portion. So the, the bad news for this antenna is noise. Like there, I'm pegged at S9 on 80, on uh, 40 meters. Right here it is, uh, you know, it's a little bit just below S9. Here on 80, it's just below, it's just, just below S9. So just the noise floor is just nuts. 
with this antenna are picking up all kinds of noise. And I've heard that these long wire and, and antennas, they're notorious for picking up noise from anything that the neighbor has, your neighbors will have. If they've got a, you know, a cordless drill or anything in the house, it's going to pick it up as noise. Even the, uh, some of the, the smart meters too. Uh, Klaus has a question for you, Dave. Sure, Klaus, go ahead. I can't see who's got hands up. Go ahead, Klaus. Sorry. I guess it would help if I turn it on. I think your problem with noise is you're really close to the ground. But have you tried putting a, uh, a ferrite uh, coil around the wire just to try and get rid of the noise a little bit? No, I've, I have ordered. The, the other problem I've got, which I don't mention here, is I have got a lot of RF in the shack. And in some cases, I'll pop a breaker. And uh, uh, let me, yeah, and a pop breakers just because of the RFI coming back into the, the shack. Uh, let me see, do I have, yeah, here's my, where's my. You may have a lot of trouble trying to stop that breaker from, from tripping, Dave, because uh, Kingston Dave has, uh, has uh, he's cured of most of it, but it still trips on him every once in a while. Yeah, I'm just trying to find my uh, results. It might be in this reverse beacon file here. Let me see if it's in this file here. Hopefully this thing loads. Again, I don't have Microsoft Office loaded on this computer and I have to use Open Office. And it sucks. See, like I get shit like this, you know, like for God's sakes, man. Yeah, here's where I've got. Uh, no, this is not the file. No, what did I do with the? Where did I put the file? I. Looks as if I don't the file didn't get transferred to this PC. I don't think it's whisper testing. Yeah, no, this is my whisper results. So here it is on 160 meters. Here you can see the azimuth. You know, and, and Peter, I think I I don't know why I highlighted that as yellow. Oh, I highlighted um, um uh, VE3, so uh, Ontario. I just highlighted Ontario stations that I was able to contact and whisper. Here's on 40 meters. So Peter here, if you look at the asthma here, 52, 150, 415 kilometers, that's, you may know this guy. This guy's probably out of Kingston Way. I don't know if you know this this, this person. Because he's got to be out near you. I figured you must know everyone in that area. Yeah, right. Yeah. It might be out in Brockville. Yeah, so here's another, some more testing. And here's on 30 meters. So you see the antenna is getting out. You know, it's actually working fairly well. And... Uh, Here's 17, 15. And if I go anything above 15, that's when I got a lot of RF uh, coming back into the shack. And typically I'll pop a breaker. So I, so Klaus, coming back to your question, I did order some ferrite beads. I haven't gotten them yet. So not ferrite beads, some ferrite uh, chokes to go on my, my cable, uh, my coax cable to choke off the RFI because these long wire antennas too, if you don't have a good and ideal ground, that's typically a symptom. You get RFI coming back into the shack. Just quickly looking here with, uh, how are you grounding your station? Yeah, as I said, it's a, I've got, you mean ground for what, like for antenna ground plane? No, or? no, no, the station ground itself. Are you, are you taking all of your, uh, all of your equipment to a single point? Sure. And, yep. uh, grounding that single point outside. 
Nope, it's not grounded outside. That's maybe your problem. No, why why would that cause noise? Because what you're you're not grounded. All you're doing is grounding the antenna. You should have all your equipment grounded too. That's why you have grounding screws in the back. Right. Everything is a common ground within my shack. It's connected to the household ground. No, you don't want to do that. You want to have a separate ground. You want to have make sure that everything goes to a common point. Uh, I've but, got a bus bar, but so but you don't end up with ground loops, and that's grounded outside to, uh, the cost to Earth. For me to run a wire from where I am outside. Okay, that's a long wire. Okay, and that wire is going to have inductance. And so that is going to not going to be the path that it's going to take to ground. It's going to go back to my household ground. It'll always go back to my household ground because uh, it's the closest <clears throat> ground. It's going to have to go there eventually. Otherwise, you, you, it, matter of fact, if you do not bond your RF ground eventually back at the panel, that's where mine is bonded back at the panel. You must do that. It's illegal not to. And if you don't bond it, then you're going to have you. You're risking a potential difference. Two two different grounds in a house in one dwelling is not legal, and you could uh, you could have a potential difference between the two grounds. Right. That's that's for safety. That's for electrical safety. Correct. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens, Dave, uh, when you you raise it up in the air a little bit higher, although how much higher can you get? Well, I, my plan is to get it up at uh, five meters above um, the ground. So it's going up like uh, 15, 20 feet in the air. That's the highest I can get it up. Okay. So if you, by the way, Dave is up near, it's in between Arm Prior and Ottawa on the Ottawa River. So I ran some simulations of, of the antenna. This is the far field pattern. I don't like using this. I like using the 3D plot. So if I look at the um, the pattern, this is at 14 megahertz. Okay, so this is south. This part of the house is pointing south. This is pointing north. Okay, with the antenna, with the ground plane I've got, you could see that the I'm getting some gain in what's that? That's the north uh, northeast, uh, which is north again. X. You oh, know, no, sorry. This is north. So that's the southeast. See, I'm getting some gain in the southeast, and I'm also getting seaboard a little bit of gain here in the northwest. Northwest. So pointing north, right? Yeah. The x-axis here is pointing north. So you can see there it's favoring a, a kind of a, a, a westerly and an easterly heading, right? Azimuth, it's, it's favoring that. And that's what I'm seeing on the, um, the um, performance I'm getting, the contacts. And I wish I could get that spreadsheet where I've got all the uh, contacts listed. I don't know where it is, but you know that's what I'm seeing now. If I go over to, uh, if I go over to say seven megahertz, see most of the radiation is going straight up, and the other thing is notice I there's no gain. I'm actually losing energy, and if you look at the efficiency, your Nevis stuff, Dave. Yeah, right. Perfect. That's right. So if you look at the efficiency of the antenna, only 10% of the energy that's being fed into the antenna is being radiated. Wow. This, this, is, this is not correct. There's a problem there. Uh, I've read that this is also accounting for like losses in the ground. So this is not radiated power is not correct. It's actually taking the overall efficiency of the antenna. So it's it's taking it's taking how much um, energy the antenna will actually take in. This is actually telling you how much energy is actually radiating into the atmosphere. So only ten percent. So out of a hundred watts, out of a hundred watts, only 
10 watts is being radiated. And that is also um, uh, agrees with what comments I've heard about long wire antennas. They're not very efficient. They work, but they're not very <coughs> And I think if I go back to 14, you'll see I'll get the same, same efficiency. I get a little bit higher and get 26. And it's probably because it's a higher frequency, it can be a little bit lower to the ground because the wavelength is uh, shorter, right? Yeah. So I'm getting a little bit more. I'm getting 26 watts coming out. And this is now, this is in theory. Well, between you messing around with Whisper and FT8 and stuff like that, you'll probably easily confirm or deny what you've uh, your theoretical stuff is saying, Dave. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, what I've been trying to do is get the um, I don't man where I don't know where I put that file. It's going to drive me crazy now. I think you're letting your job get in the way of ham radio. Yeah, maybe. Nope, that's not it. No, nope. anyway, I can't, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't have enough time to prepare for this to get the, all the files over on this uh, computer. <clears throat> 